Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ah, good evening. So we are going to start with the session number two. And this is our second day of this uh, new course. Uh, remember that this uh, week we are going to um, end the work on a Friday because uh, we miss one day at the beginning of the of the the week. So in this case, we are going to work on a Friday, but the others a uh, week we are going to end in another day. But the last week also we are going to end in Friday, I guess. So we are going to start um, this session. And I think that we are going to begin the sessions like five minutes uh, earlier because I have another group uh, after this one. So we are going to start in five minutes earlier that the hour that um, we are supposed to begin the classes. So in this case, we are going to begin five minutes um, we're not going to start at eight, but we're going to start at 7.55 uh, because we are going to have all the complete hours. So in this case, um, I just want to say uh, that. And if you cannot um, access to the meeting at uh, that time, don't worry. We are uh, going to develop the, the information during the, the following hours. So in that case, it's not a big problem. So. Uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, problems. Uh, we were talking about how to uh, talk about problems. And also we were talking about uh, how to solve those problems or how to express the idea that we have about the problems that we can find in some places. Um, and we have like an exercise that we need to perform. So let me show you the screen. And we are going to begin. So we have here the last thing that we were learning yesterday. But in this case, I'm just going to make a little review of the topic and then we are going to begin with the exercise. And in this case, we have this one that is the topic that we were uh, developing that is uh, describing problems. And in this case, we have the definition of problem that is the first thing that we were learning then we were seeing the two different ways in which we can describe a problem one is with the past participle as an adjective and the other one is with nouns then we have some examples of this and this one that is action taken and that is the part that we are going to uh, continue right now that is the action taken or what needs to be done in this case, we have near plus a passive infinitive and near plus a gerund. And in this case is when uh, we are talking about the solution of a problem. So in that case, we express that ideas using uh, these uh, structures. In the near plus passive uh, infinitive, in this case, you're going to use your um, uh, verbs in present, we can say. And then we are going to use like the last part of the sentence with past. And in the other one that is the need plus gerund, we know that in this case, we are using the verbs with the ing form. So now we are going to continue with that part, but first we need to perform the exercise that we have here. Remember that I was saying that we are going to have like two problems with these words that we have here. Uh, we have a break, we have cheap, we have dent, scratch, leak, tear, stain, and crack. Those are the words that we are going to use for the problem. So in this case, you need to write two problems and then you are going to give a solution for those problems. 
And in that case, you can use uh, need plus uh, ing or gerund or need plus a passive infinitive. So in that case, you are going to choose what is the best structure that you are going to use. Also, you can use um, both of these structures that is the past participle or the nouns to express what is the problem that you are going to write in your example. So the first thing that we're going to do right now is to uh, write our examples of the problems. We're going to do it like this. In this case, we're going to write the sentence on the chat and you can add the solution in the same message. And I'm going to write some examples on the document. So two problems using those words that you have in the, uh, in the word exercise and a solution. So I'm going to give you like five minutes to write the two problems and the solution that you are going to give following the examples that we have in the document. So now is your time to write your Chip problems using break, chip, dent, scratch, leak, tear, stain, and crack, and a solution that you can give to that problem. And when you uh, when five minutes uh, has passed, I'm uh, going to choose some examples and some solutions, and I'm going to write it in the document. So right now we are going to start with the five minutes in which you are going to write your exercise your uh, examples your sentences on the chat and the solution cinco minutos vamos a escribir dos problemas una solución usando las estructuras que ya tenemos lo escribimos en el chat pasado los cinco minutos yo escojo algunos ejemplos los escribimos y los vamos viendo so right now you have five minutes to complete that exercise
Okay, I have some examples on the chat. So now I'm going to write uh, these ones that I have here. And if you um, didn't write your sentence, please do it because we are going to have it on the document. So please begin writing your sentences uh, with the words that we have here and the solutions because that is the part of the exercise. And for the ones that uh, don't know what we are doing right now, we are just writing some examples um, of sentences using it that uh, those words that we have in, in the exercise part, uh, break, chip, dent, scratch, leak, tear, stain, and crack to describe two problems. And in this case, you can uh, think about what problem you want to express. And you are going to write one solution for those um, for those uh, problems. So in this case, I'm going to write some of the examples that we have already on the chat. So in this case, I'm going to write first the problems, and then we are going to see some solutions that we can use, not just for these uh, problems, but we can use it for um, another kind of problem that we can have in our daily life. So we're going to see. In this case, I'm going to use it just in a present. We are going to use just in present. In this case, we're not going to use past. We can do it, yes, but in this case, I will do it in a present.
Okay, here we have some examples of uh, this sentence in which we are talking about some problems. Um, I will read these ones and then I'm going to write some of the solution that you wrote on uh, the uh, chat. So don't worry, we are going to talk about just the problems and then we're going to talk about the solutions. We have, she is there in the pages, my glass is broken. The vessel is broken. There is a leak in my shower. My phone screen is broken. My homework is scratched. The sink has a leak. There are several cracks in the wall. My shirt was white, but now it is stained. In this case, I wrote like in past because we were talking about the uh, state of the shirt. So in that case, the shirt was white, but now, it is a stain. So in that case, I use that uh, structure. The walls are cracked. The dress is stained. Then we have the table is break. In this case, it's broke. And we are going to see some of the solution that we have here. I need to have a, this case is broken. And we have here the following solutions. In this case, it is not just for the, um, for one of these problems. We can use uh, those solutions for uh, many problems. We can uh, like, search for the best way to apply the solution for the following problems that we have here and also for other problems that we can have. In the first one, we have this one. I need to have a break. I need to have a break. Then we have, I need a new glass. Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm going to improve this sentence. I'm going to write, I need buy-in a new glass because we are applying the ING form also. In this case, it's going to appear like this because we are applying the ING form of this structure. In this case, it needs to be repaired. It needs to be repaired, it needs to be fixed. Then we have, we need the plumber. Contacting a plumber. I need to do it again. It needs repairing. So here we have some of the solution that we have here. And in this case, it's going to be marked because um, it's a kind of different uh, structure that we are using to talk about the solutions. And in this case, 
Having these examples, we are going to see something more about the solutions and how to express, or in which cases we are going to use these structures uh, when we are talking about the solution of the problems. So we are going to have like um, more information about these, uh, these structures. And then we are going to have like an exercise, but in that case, we are going to see the video in which we have the exercise and then we are going to um, discuss um, the answers for uh, that exercise. And we are going to give our opinions about the, the answers because in that case, you need to read the sentence and also the words that you have there. And also we are going to have like a two different, we can say two different activities right now. So in this case, we are going to see and in which cases or why we need to use this structure of the need plus, um, plus the gerund in this case, because we're talking about gerund. And, but it is not just the very need in this case, is we are going to use also uh, keep, because you know that we are using need and keep with a gerund. So in this case, we are going to use a gerund or a gerund follows the verb keep when, in this case, when we are referring to a repetitive action, in this case is something that is happening uh, once again and again and again. So in that case, we are going to use the gerund following keep. And also we are going to see some examples using the gerund and keep and also uh, needs plus a gerund and passive infinity but that's uh, it's going to be the last part of this a topic that is the solutions or talking about problems so let's see the information that i have for you and also the examples And in this case, when you are going to use needs with a gerund or with passive infinitive, in this case, it's just um, a way in which we can write those sentences. But one thing that you need to keep in mind is that in this case, uh, both structures are going to mean the same thing. So in this case, it's just, um, that we can have options uh, when we are expressing something. But in this case, they mean the same thing. So um, it's like having two ways to write the same idea. But in this case, it's, it's going to have the same meaning when you are expressing the solution to your problems. But in this case, it's, you have two different options to write your ideas. One is with gerund and the other one is gone is with a passive infinitive. So in that case that you need to remember that they have the same 
meaning, but with a different way of writing. So in that case, has the same meaning to these two sentences. So we're going to see the example to uh, understand better uh, this, uh, this use of those structures. So you can see in these examples, we have the same idea. In the first one, it says, this chair needs fixing. And in the second one, this chair needs to be fixed. At the end, the idea that we are trying to say is that the chair needs something because it is not in its best uh, state. In this case, we're talking about that the chair needs to be fixed. But they have a different way to express the same idea in this case, but we have the same meaning for um, both sentences. And also in the first one, uh, we are talking about a, a repetitive action, like in the example, my teacher keeps telling me to learn my verbs. In this case, it's something that is happening uh, more than one or, or two times in this case. Maybe it's something that happened like many times, like two, three, four times. And in this case, it's something repetitive. And in the other one, her siblings keep fighting over the TV. This is not something new. This is something that happened uh, all the time. So in that case, it's something that is a repeating, uh, a repeating action. So in that case, we are going to use those structures or this structure, the gerund follow the verb keep, when we have this kind of action that are a repetitive action. So in that case, we have uh, those uh, uh, structures to express the problems and also the, uh, the solutions. So, and in this case, we're going to uh, use uh, these structures uh, to give two more examples. We are going to give two more examples, but in this case, you need to think about two um, improvements that you want to give to your house. Because maybe we are making some changes in our houses and we need to express those improvements in our house. So, Think about two things that you want to change in your house. And we are going to give those examples. Vamos a pensar en dos mejoras que queremos hacer a nuestra casa. Y podemos utilizar estas dos eh, estructuras que tenemos acá. Y en un par de minutos, yo creo que no vamos a tardar mucho tiempo, unos tres minutos. Eh, vamos a dar esas dos oraciones sobre las mejoras que queremos dar a nuestra casa. So think about two improvements that you can give to your house and then you're going to tell me your sentence. So we have like three or four minutes to complete that part.
So I'm going to start writing the sentence that we have here. So let's begin. Okay, here we have some examples of these structures that we have here about the improvements in the house. And we have the bathroom needs new plumbing. My house needs to be painted. My bedroom needs to be painted. The coffee table needs to be changed. My kitchen needs to be remodeled. The floor needs to be repaired. The entire house needs to be painted. The door needs to be changed. A new fence needs to be built. The roof needs to be covered and the floor needs to be changed. And I think we have one more. Okay, good. So in this case, we have like 
uh, one of the most common uh, improvements that uh, you are writing in the examples is that the house needs to be painted. So in that case, we have uh, just choose one of these to represent that uh, sentence. In this case, we are not going to write uh, the same sentence one, I mean, two or three times. In this case, we have just some examples of this part. That is the gerund or the passive infinitive. In this case, it's more that a passive infinitive than the gerund. So in this case, we have finished this part of the problems. So in this case, we are ending the part of talking about problems and solutions. And now we are going to see uh, the video in which we are going to see some new uh, vocabulary. But in this case, we are going to talk about uh, in this case, it's, it's talking about things that can go wrong with electronic items. So we are talking about problems, but now we are talking about electronic items, and we're going to see some sentences. Uh, you are going to hear the sentences and the words that we have there, and we are going to think about the word that uh, better fit the sentence that we have in the in the exercise. In this case, it's not like an exercise itself, but it needs to be done. Because in that case, you are going to find what is the, the word that that is best for the uh, situation that we have there. So let me go to the video and put it in one. So we're going to listen at the sentences that we have there. And then we are going to discuss what is the best option. So here we are. Hello, we want you to work on the following sentences. You may complete them by using the correct form of keep and the words in the box. This time you will do this exercise on your notebook and ask your teacher to check them for you. My computer is driving me crazy. It, the buttons on the remote control always stick. They, the UCD player often jumps to another song. It, our new flat screen TV has a problem. It, those old cell phones never work right anymore. They, sometimes Ed can't use his solar powered calculator. It, my computer screen needs to be replaced. It, the answering machine never picks up any calls. It, Ready to describe a problem with an electric item you own? Follow my example. Okay, in this case, we have the sentence header and we're going to use the word keep in that case because it's talking about keep. And we are going to see what is the best option that we have for the sentence that is in the, in, on the video. So. Let me go to the document. I will put the sentences there and you are going to write and find what is the best option. So in that case, you are just going to tell me, oh, I think that um, the best option for that is this word and all of that thing. So here we have this sentence. this one. So here we have the sentences and we have the words. The words that we are using are the, the ones in, in the box. There is breakdown, crash, flicker, freeze, go dead, jam, overheat, and skip. So in this case, we have a sentence and you need to find what is the best option for each sentence. 
So we have in the first uh, sentence, my computer is driving me crazy. It, and you are going to think about one uh, thing that uh, is happening to the computer. Then the buttons on the remote control always stick. They, that use a CD player often jumps to another song, it. Our new flat screen TV has a problem, it. Those old cell phones never work right anymore, they. Sometimes Ed can use his solar power calculator, it. My computer screen needs to be replaced, it. And the answering machine never picks up any calls, it. And in this case, when you are going to uh, continue the sentence, you are going to see it, it keep in the word that best suit the sentence. So read the sentence and read the words and you can give me your ideas about the, uh, the word that can be in that sentence. So, so we're going to have like two or three minutes to read the sentence and to have an idea about the answers. So let's see. Okay, let's see. 
what is the best option for the sentence number one? What do you think? What is the best option for that sentence? Freeze. Ah, good. It keep freezing in that case, or it keep freeze. Good. For the second one, what is the best option? What is the best uh, idea or the word that you, you use for the second sentence? Jam. Jam, good. Jam is a good option. For the number three. Skip, skip, good, skip. Number four. Crash. Crash. Mm, we can say crash. Another idea. Break down. Break down. Break down too. Also, we can use in that case the word flicker because in Spanish, flicker is like parpadeo. Maybe the TV screen has something uh, wrong, but we can have like uh, different options. For the number five, what is the word that you think is the best option? Break down. Go Good, we can use breakdown also. For the number six, sometimes Ed can use his solar power calculator. Overheat. Overheat, good, overheat. Overheat. Good. Number seven. Rita. Mm, we can say yes. flicker. Mm -hmm. Freeze. What other word? Freeze. Freeze. Good. Flicker. It can be. Mm -hmm. Good. And the last one, number eight. Breakdown. It can say breakdown, but also. Go there go there because maybe in that case it doesn't have any sound because it is not picking up any call so we can use go there too okay in that case we can uh, see that uh, uh, we can have uh, more than one option but also it is one that is best but in this case we can have a different option option for these uh, these situations so in this case, we can use these words to describe problems with the electronic device. We have breakdown, we have crash, we have flicker, we have freeze, go death, jam, overheat, and skip in this case. So when you have a problem with your electronic device, you can use that vocabulary. And you know that some of these words are very, very common. So. In this case, we have like in Spanish, breakdown is like una ruptura, una avería que no funciona. Crash es como un quiebre que se ha quebrado algo que se ha dañado. Eh, flicker es como un parpadeo. Eh, freeze es que se ha congelado, que no funciona, que no corre. Go dead que está muerto, no tiene tono, no tiene sonido. Jam es como se traba o tiene alguno de esos problemas. Overheat, que se sobrecalienta Y skip, pues que se salta de un eh, En este caso podríamos utilizarlo en CD player Que se salta de una canción a otra So in that case we can use that vocabulary For the problems with the electronic devices Now, we are going to make Or we are going to do the exercise That we have on the platform That is the a listening exercise and a reading, a reading exercise. We are going to perform those two uh, exercises 
And uh, if you are not complete that uh, section, you are going to see right now what are the options that we have for um, those exercises. So we are going to do the listening exercise in the part 111. And also we are going to see the reading exercise in part 112. So we are going to, give me a second because I need to play the audio. And we are going to listen carefully what are the information that the, um, the audio program has. And then we are going to read the uh, sentence that we have there. So we are going to pay attention to the uh, audio program. Listen to three people talk about their job. Complete the chart. One, Joe. I work in the watch repair center at a large department store. I repair all kinds of watches. But nowadays, most of them are pretty easy to fix because they all run on batteries. The most common problem is they need a new battery. Since that only takes a minute or so to fix, I always have plenty of time to tell my watch jokes, like this one. What time is it when an elephant sits on your watch? Time to buy a new watch. And here's another one. What time is it when the big hand is on the... Two, Louise. I repair luggage, mostly suitcases. I have a little shop at the airport. People spend a lot of money on luggage, and often all it takes is one flight for a suitcase to get damaged. The most typical problem, I guess, is the wheels. I fix the wheels on about 20 suitcases a week. It's not surprising, really, with the way those baggage handlers throw people's luggage around. You'd think they were playing ball, the way they toss the suitcases. Three, Sam. I repair household appliances. The most frequent calls I get are from people who are having trouble with the garbage disposal system in their kitchen sink. Usually, the thing gets jammed because people put too much food into it at one time, or something metal or plastic has fallen down into it. It's usually pretty easy to fix a garbage disposal, but every once in a while, you run into situations that aren't exactly typical. One time, a little girl put her doll down into the disposal. She thought the doll would enjoy the ride. She couldn't get it back out again, and she was afraid to tell her mother. So when the mother went to use the disposal, it made a horrible noise and then died. And so did the doll. Okay, so there we have the um, audio program. In that case, we're just going to see what are the uh, things that we need to um, have about this exercise. One is uh, about joy. What does this person repair? What is the typical problem with the thing that the, uh, he is repairing? Then we have a Luis. Uh, the, what, is, what does this person repair? What is the typical problem? And also Sam, what does the, this person repair? But we are going to answer those um, situations tomorrow because now it's time to end the session because remember that we are going to begin at 7.55 because I have another group and we are going to end like um, this hour. So. We're going to uh, continue uh, with the exercises tomorrow and we are going to end the session here. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night.